Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And today we're going to be playing a solo game of Axis and Allies Europe, and solo because uh, the fellows that uh, we're going to come over can't make it uh, till much later, and uh, a couple of them wanted to play something a little bit more Euro, uh, not quite so much uh, Bang Bang. So <clears throat> we're going to do a quick solo game here, so I have it set up anyway. And uh, we have found in our games that uh, Germany has a tough time winning this. Uh, maybe in the comments below, let me know. You know, do your, uh, do your games go the other way when you play uh, this, this version? This is from, uh, I think it's 99 or 2001 or something. But it's from a, from a ways ago, from a piece ago anyway. And uh, yeah, we typically see Germany... Uh, just kind of pile up the dead at the gates of Moscow, because that's their goal. They, all they need to do is take Moscow and uh, just stave off the uh, British and the Americans. Uh, if you're not familiar with this game, uh, a couple of interesting pointers. Uh, here's your box to put all your things. You can see fighters are 12, bombers are 15, battleships are still 24, and uh, yeah, transports are 8, carriers are 18. Uh, tanks are a nickel, but they go back to the old school rules on this one where tanks attack at a three but only defend at a two. And that's usually what happens with Germany is they come forward with a whole whack of, you know, guys and tanks and then the, they get chewed up by the defense of the Russian infantry and then there's a bunch of tanks sitting there that the Russians are then able to wipe out because they only defend at a two and, yeah, it gets pretty ugly. But hey, if you have a different experience with this game where it's always Germany winning and the Allies just can't get a foothold, uh, hey, let me know in the comments below. It would be interesting. Uh, another thing that's uh, neat about this game is the oil in the Middle East. All of these are worth some points here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and they, uh, when, when Germany comes in, so let's say Germany, uh, you know, ends up in Iran, that's two bucks of oil. And what happens here is, instead of this coming from the bank, this actually comes out of the pockets of the Allies. And so it's, uh, it can sting a little bit. So that's Germany's hope, is to get into those oil-rich provinces and states and just take it. All right, well, wish us luck, and we'll see what happens. Uh, the convoys are very simple here, too. So you just park a warship of some kind in here, and it blocks that much until it's taken out. So... All right, well, we'll see what happens here on turn one of Axis and Allies Europe, old school. All right, round one is in the books, and uh, Germany had a pretty good first round. Uh, they ended up convoying the British successfully here, and uh, Germany starts with ten subs in this game, and they ended up with eight at the end of the round, and then they built one for nine, so... Uh, the Brits and the Americans didn't get too many hits on them and have forced them all to buy destroyers with their build just to take care of this U-boat menace. Uh, we'll see how things go on the land to see if we can uh, have Germany spend more money on subs, but for right now they're, they've got a lot of steel in the water, more than they usually have at this point, so maybe that's a, a sign that the tide is changing for them, we'll see. Uh, one little quick note, uh, you may have noticed that there was no Soviet infantry in Iran when I did my little demo, and as I was doing it, you know how you have something going on in your head, you're like, something's wrong with that, but essentially, yeah, uh, there's supposed to be a Russian guy there, so I put him in there before we started the game. Uh, not a lot happened here that doesn't usually happen. Uh, the Germans decided to stay out of the Baltic states, but kind of slammed into East Poland and Bessarabia and uh, put enough force in there that the Russians just decided to gather their forces, gird up their loins as it were, and uh, try to stop this push from the Germans up north. Um, the Russians built a bunch of men and an artillery and gathered all their tanks in Moscow, which is pretty typical for this game. They don't want the tanks on the front line. As said before, they only defend at a two. Um, not much else to say. Uh, Germany is kind of going uh, whole hog after Moscow. I did mention at the beginning that that's Germany's only play, really, is trying to take Moscow. Uh, that's not entirely true, because according to the rules, you could also go after London 
or after Washington over here, but uh, that's nigh impossible in this game, and this is very difficult. Uh, it's just, it's not easy to do at all. Transports are eight bucks a pop, and uh, all the British have to do is start dropping guys there, and the Russians, if they keep their economy up, they can just, yeah, it just wouldn't happen. Um, might try it someday, just to see if there's any way that Germany can invade, can pull off a, I don't want to say sea lion, because this is 1942, but uh, pull off an invasion. Uh, down south, uh, sank the British destroyer, had to land in Algeria though, because they didn't have any more legs on that plane. Uh, and the Germans also took Malta. This is something that we do uh, probably every other game. Uh, the British start uh, with Malta with a fighter, and uh, it's just a really persnickety thing down here. So if you're going to put any kind of money into a Kriegsmarine down here in the med, you definitely want to take care of that fighter on the first round. If it comes back here and lands here to bulk up the Egyptian defense, uh, it, it's hard for the Germans to punch through without you know, sending more and more resources down there. Did lose a man though to the fighter, of course. Um, that's pretty much it though, so round two is coming up. Uh, in this round, the Germans, by the way, bought uh, artillery and men and the aforementioned sub. Russians built men and an artillery and everybody else built destroyers. All right, we'll see if uh, anything changes here, see if this convoy stays here. This convoy marker, by the way, is from Historical Board Gaming. They're gorgeous little things. They're plastic, right? So they nice and uh, beefy, and it also reminds you that uh, Britain's not making that money. All right, let's see what happens here at the end of round two. All right, turn two is in the books, and... Uh, Germany is actually having a pretty decent game here, although uh, that aforementioned wall of humanity is uh, looking to be quite healthy. But we'll kind of give you the blow-by-blow blow here. We'll start down here in the Middle East. Germans came into Egypt and took out the uh, destroyer and the transport and took out all of the units here and didn't lose a thing. A little help from the Luftwaffe, of course. And so that... This is probably going to change the fortunes a little bit, so the British have decided to uh, hop into Transjordan there and hopefully uh, hold on to that for a moment, but probably not for long. Uh, in the South Atlantic, the uh, Americans sent a couple of destroyers down, took care of that convoy. And the Americans are trying something kind of goofy here. We'll see if it works out. But with all of these uh, subs floating around and destroyers costing... 50% more than subs, uh, the Germans, if they keep building subs, which they did this turn, they built two more, uh, they can really keep the Americans busy building destroyers. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if that helps out a little bit. I uh, also flew over the bomber and the fighter. You'll notice the British bomber is gone because it got shot down trying to do a bombing run over Germany because the British, as you can see, built nothing this round. Uh, they saved their money because there's just too many subs floating around for them to plant a couple of destroyers down just to get sunk. Uh, remember, there's no scrambling in this game, so you can't help out your, your boats. So, uh, But the Germans are down a little bit now, down to five U-boats. Uh, Lost a couple this last round here. They had nine at the end of their turn last time. They had seven this time, down to five, so that's... Uh, getting smaller. Oh, sorry, six. I forgot about the one up here. The Soviet is being convoyed. And the Soviet Navy, such as it was, came out here to attack and failed miserably, as you can see. Uh, neat part of this game is transports, you can take them first. You can take them as cannon fodder in this version. So for those of you uh, wondering why the transport's gone, it came out as well. Doesn't doesn't attack. Does defend with a one, uh, but subs attack and defend at a two, and uh, good golly if they just didn't miss. And... Uh, the U-boat sank them. Uh, also, the British fighter, fighters, pardon me, flew over here to Leningrad, and uh, on the Soviet turn, the Soviet player, who of course is me, uh, can decide to turn those into Soviet units to use them. So it's kind of like the Lend-Lease thing, so uh, British may end up having to do that if the German continues to build U-boats, the Brits might just buy a bunch of fighters and wait for the Yanks to come over and clear the sea. Uh, the Germans, this is the first time uh, I've ever witnessed this in this game for myself. Again, in the comments, let me know. But it's the first time I've ever played where Germany hasn't built a tank yet. 
Uh, they just grabbed all the tanks that they had. I think there's 10 of them on the board, or 11 or something, and they sent them over. All of them are now sitting there, protected by quite a bit of infantry and artillery. Um, the Soviets, though, have their own strategy, which seems to be working out. They've got about 15 men here. And then up here, they've got another, well, it looks to be about 14 men, and then throw in some stuff. So they got about 30, 33 units between the Germans and Moscow, and the Germans just don't have that much yet, but there's help coming, so we'll see. But the Russian armor is just waiting, licking its collective chops. Uh, up north, a little bit of a stalemate, but the Luftwaffe flew up a couple of fighters after their, uh, at the end of their turn. Maybe they'll have some fun things to do uh, next round. All right. Uh, also, with this uh, Egypt going, you can see that the, in the Middle East, one dollar, and that came out of the Americans' bank account. So, all right, we'll see here. Here's the uh, thing. Don't let uh, this fool you. That's just art. But the Americans are here, and they tend to stay there unless they get convoyed. Russians are dropping though, and the Germans are up to forty-one. Uh, but uh, I think that could go up a little further and a little faster very shortly. Ah, just very quickly, I forgot to mention that the Germans, in fact, came in and took Ukraine. Uh, and they had a couple tanks and three men left over from the battle, which, of course, got crushed. But uh, it was the hope that uh, they could pull some of these guys a little bit south, and then maybe Leningrad will be a bit more open. But with those two fighters there now, uh, it's just a big mess. But we'll see what happens. There's... Uh, the Germans, you know, time's not on their side. They got to get going here and uh, not be exposed at the same time. So it's a bit of a tricky, tricky gamble. All right, we'll see how turn three goes for them. All right, uh, dust in the wind just came on. So kind of what happened on <laughs> on the the board here in this last round. We'll start in the Atlantic, and you can see all the convoy markers here. Uh, the Germans had convoyed here, here, and here. And so the British were down five, ten, thirteen dollars, and they only making twenty-five. So they were down to uh, uh, twelve bucks last round. But they had saved their money for a couple rounds, so they bought three fighters that they will be sending over to to Russia, of course. Uh, <clears throat> the Germans have finally decided that eh, it's not really worth it. They're going to start moving this guy over, so he can get picked up probably by Mr. Transport here. Germans came through here, uh, and uh, this transport picked up a guy from here and a guy from here and just dropped them off in Syria for free. So that's two bucks now, both of which came out of the Americans. You can see two dollars there. The big story, though, was in Ukraine. Uh, I thought, boy, i got to whittle down that stack a little bit of all that Russian uh, infantry. He had 16 infantry and two artillery, so he had 18 units there. And so the Germans went in and uh, in the first round got 14 hits, uh, which was uh, pretty sweet. I mean, there are 10 tanks, and uh, we had 12, 13, well, we had uh, seven, art, 7 RD and 7 infantry, that's 14. Then we uh, had a few more infantry as well. Um, the Russians did well, though. I think they ended up getting 8 or 9 hits just with their uh, twos out of 20. So that was they were shooting a little bit above, punching above their weight, as it were. Um, but because the first, uh, getting 14 hits in the first round was so devastating, I figured that uh, we'd continue on. I was actually just going to maybe knock down 10 or so and probably trade 10 and then back off <clears throat> and then hit him again when my infantry was up. Um, but as it turns out, I still have one infantry left for the Germans and the Russians took it on the chin. Uh, so they built in Stalingrad. So now they've got a couple of islands of strength here and they're kind of begging the Germans to come and attack them. This is kind of like the French in Vietnam and Dien Bien Phu. We all know how that turned out. So uh, it's kind of looking that way right now, but we'll see because Belarusia is the black hole of this game because you've got uh, your three factories all around it and they can crush in on it. So we'll see. Uh, the Americans flew some stuff over here, and of course those used to be British fighters are now Soviet fighters. So this equipment will become Soviet equipment 
Uh, the Germans came into Karelia and took it, but only had three guys left. So the uh, Soviets sortied north uh, using their air power from Moscow, and they took over Karelia. So now there's nothing up top for the Germans, so this will just be gobbled up pretty quickly by the Russians. And what this does is this allows the Americans, who have built three fighters, to, uh, to get their stuff over there a little bit more uh, quickly especially if Leningrad does fall. Now they can come on the northern route. Um, not much else to say on this round. It's pretty much it. Uh, this is fairly typical. If you can get any kind of support down here for the Germans, it's pretty typical that they do take the Middle East. And uh, this number should be up to eight by the end of this round. And that's a bit of a bite, right? That's that's a bite out of the, uh, the Allies. Um, but uh, we'll see if it's... Uh, it's going to be enough. The Russians are making enough to build five men this next round. Um, that might not carry on, but uh, the Germans are have a steady march of guys coming up here. We'll see if they get there in time. And we're headed into round four. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, the end of round four is in the books here. And, uh, well, some strange things are continuing to happen here. So, just as a side note, Operation Torch went off without a hitch. Sort of like the real thing, I guess. Uh, the Germans are evacuating a lot of their stuff out of the west here, but they did pile up an air force and some men. So, uh, the Americans built three transports with things to load on them. British were uh, convoyed to death last round, so all they could get was 12 bucks, so they decided to buy a fighter with that, and uh, sent their other stuff over to here, which I'm sure the Soviets will change into their gear if it survives. Big, 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 big fights here. Uh, the Germans came in, took Stalingrad, killed all those troops, and had eight tanks left. And then the German, or the Russians sent down there five tanks and uh, their air force. They had three fighters and a bomber to use. And they uh, were able to kill all but two. And they lost all their tanks doing it, but they didn't want to lose an air force. So they backed off at that point. But the German armor is pretty anemic right now. So that could be the, the tide turn that we always uh, talk about in this game. Right when the Germans look like they've got the Russians on the ropes, the Russians... Thanks to help from the West, are able to uh, defend. But we'll see. Leningrad will probably fall this round. Uh, and the Germans can now build in Stalingrad. If you're not familiar with the rules, you can build in any captured territory that has a factory, of course. You can't build new factories. And they uh, will produce one unit because they're only worth one. So you can see worth one, worth one, Archangel's worth one. Of course, if Moscow falls and, and Berlin holds, then that's curtains for the Allies. But looking like the, uh, the tide has turned, um, Germans have now lost their first little bit of money in the game. And that'll probably increase now as there's more Americans coming over next round. And the British are probably not too long from uh, building some stuff to transport over but we'll see I mean the Germans still have a really healthy economy they're up uh, very close to 50 plus they get uh, eight here so they have they should have 58 to spend this round if if they didn't save anything so that's a pretty good stack of coin and they might be able to press the issue a bit but we'll see what happens here on turn four uh, just not enough to to go after mother Russia right now unfortunately for the Germans, but Leningrad could probably fall, and there's some tasty stuff there to kill, and they might be able to trade some infantry for that, so that would be worth it. Um, built a couple more U-boats, just to keep these guys honest, and the uh, Allies have uh, decided to make their stuff out of range of the Luftwaffe, except for the bomber, but that's not going to attack this stuff, and uh, they're going to wait to uh, get these transports going. Probably uh, patience is the better part of valor at this point, if they can hang on to Moscow. All right, well, we'll see if uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive, if you can hear the music, 
If they're right, we'll see if you ain't seen nothing yet here on turn five. All right, turn five is done, and uh, pretty simple stuff. The Germans kind of moved over here, and the Americans put their transport back there, and they brought the dis two destroyers and a battleship and three planes here to kill these five, but they uh, lost, they took three hits in the battle, took two rounds. But uh, it's a fair trade for the Allies getting rid of all the U-boats. The U-boat threat is no more. They don't exist except for this guy up in the Soviet convoy, which probably will be gone next round, which I'm sure the Soviets will be happy about. Uh, the Americans brought over their three transports and six units there. Uh, the British built a transport and a destroyer. Um, and the rest of it is pretty simple. The Germans finally built tanks. The t pressure's on to get the time going here. And, uh, yeah, they built a tank here and then built six tanks here and a couple of men and a couple of artillery. And uh, they flew a plane up to Stalingrad. The Russians, uh, the Germans took all this land here and they, they blitzed a guy up to Siberia. So they got a pretty good payout of, um, uh, I think 55 plus the 8 from the oil, so 63 bucks. And I think they saved a couple from the last round, so it'd be pretty wealthy. Leningrad, they took, uh, lost uh, a number of men doing it, but still have quite a stack left. So I figure uh, two turns, and we'll see. Moscow has probably got two turns to live, and we'll see. Maybe uh, Berlin might be threatened by then, though, with all these transports sitting here. One, two, and they can land right there. So we'll see what happens here on turn six coming up. Should be exciting. Might be the turning point of the war. All right, round six is in the books, and as you can see, the Kriegsmarine is no more, but not without cost. Uh, as you'll see, that there is no longer any American destroyers on the board. They still have two fighters, uh, and there's one British destroyer, but that is it. Nothing but transports. Still have a German transport as well. And uh, remember, transports do defend at a one, so there is a, when they're in a swarm like this, when they're in a pack, there is a chance that uh, you can get a plane shot down, so it might not be worth it, but we'll see what happens. The British were able to make a landing up here, uh, up in Norway, and uh, managed to stay, so unlike uh, history where they never did take Norway permanently until the end of the war, surrendered. Uh, the Germans have surrounded Moscow, and uh, big stack, and we're able to plant a couple of more tanks here, and uh, they took Archangel, and the Russians didn't bother sorting out this time to do anything, they're just going to hunker in the bunker. They only had nine bucks last round, so they only added three men to the stack, so right now I think they're at about 21 men, and then a handful of stuff here, so... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the final battle and we'll let you watch it in real time and uh, we'll see if there will be a, uh, a chance for them to actually uh, hold out. So one moment and we'll set up the board. Alright, well ZZ Top seems to be a uh, interesting way to finish this game off. Possibly, we'll see if the Russians can hold on. Might be an interesting uh, next round because the Germans will be a fairly spent force and if the Allies can get some help on over they already got a fighter there which I think the Germans are probably going to ignore right now alright so we've got four at one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven so we have eleven, so we have twenty-two at two we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven at three Versus one at one, and we got 15, 21, 24 at two, so just a few more than what they have, and three at four. Battle calculator says that the Germans should win this handily, but that's why we roll the dice, isn't it? So here we go. So we have the ones. Nothing for the Germans on that one. And we've got 22. These are my hit dice. If you're not Holy cow, I just rolled 12 blanks. Holy cow. So we'll take two out. We'll roll 10 more. <laughs> I don't think I've ever rolled that before. Ah, I probably have. 
Holy cow, I rolled 22 dice at two or less. I should have gotten at least seven, and I got one hit. So the Russians may have life here. We'll lose a, we'll lose a man here. I know that the odds say you should lose the bomber because only rolls a one. But after a roll like that, if the Russians have a really good response, that bomber may come in handy next round. So we'll see. And then the Germans have 11 threes. So here we go. Green hit dice for threes. Uh, that's a little better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. We got five, six, seven. Okay, but only eight hits out of all of that. So but we'll see. Russians don't have a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to punch back with here. So we'll just see if they can hold on. So you have the bomber with a one. <clears throat> oh, so that's how it's going to be. This is a just a one-sided hit die, there's only one, and they got it, so there we go. And then we know that there are 24 twos, so we'll let the... See, that's how you're supposed to roll twos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of the first 12, so that's way above the average. Another five, so 12 out of 24, so 12 hits total. So there's one, two, three, and then that's eight, and that's 13, so we'll take one back. Okay, so these are the, these are the deaths so far. The Russians are out punching the Germans by far. So, here we go, and the three fighters got one, two out of three, so two more hits. So the Germans are now out of infantry. That stack of, uh, they had 15 infantry and they're all dead. So, round two. So now we have 11 artillery. It's 11. What if we can roll all blanks again? That was interesting. Well, three hits this time. So I think we're going to take the men here. I'm, I don't know. We'll see here. I got one more round. And then we have 11 greens. Ooh, that's pretty devastating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits again. So you go five, 10, and then we'll take back the three for the, the seven. So that makes up the 10 hits that they took this round. All right. Well, they took eight hits in the first round and 10 in the second. So the Germans are warming up a bit, but we'll see if the Russians are able to punch back hard enough here. So, the bomber with the one. Holy cow! Any of you saying, you shouldn't have kept the bomber? Well, there you go. <laughs> it's two for two. That's crazy. All right, now we've got uh, 10, 13, we got 17. That doesn't make sense, because we lost eight in the first round. We would have had... Three, four, five, six, seven, seventeen. We lost eight. Out of twenty-five. So actually, the Russians get to roll another blue from last round. Okay, no hit. All right. So now we have seventeen blue. So here's eleven. So that's all I could grab at once. And we have one, two, three, four, five. And we have six more to roll. So that's five, six, seven. Seven more hits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll use them with three artillery. And then we have the three fighters, of course. Oh, only one that time. All right, but what do you do with the drunken sailor? Well, we'll find out in a second here. This is actually a lot closer than the odds calculator said it was going to be. It's 76 or 78 percent for the Germans. Not sure that would be it anymore. All right, here's the two arty. Okay, one hit. I believe that bomber is going to get another hit. And then 11 green. Uh-oh. Only four hits that time. One, two... Three, four. Okay. Okay. All right, here's the bomber. Will he get another hit? Oh, the magic's gone. 
Okay, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven twos. Ouch! Five hits. One, two. And then we'll throw away the red chip. Three, four, five. Oh, that's six, actually. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, yeah, that... No, that was just five hits, not seven. So we'll throw away that and take two back. There we go. I like making things difficult. I was looking at the fact they had seven dice. But I suspect these three fighters are probably going to kill a couple more tanks. Oh, three more. So one, two, three. Well, folks, let's just take a look here before we go any further. We have one, two, three, four, five, six units on that side and five on this side. This has 15 pips and this has 15, 16 pips. So it's 12, 16, 17 pips. So actually the Russians have a slight advantage here. I'm not sure I'd put money on it, but we'll see what happens. All right, so we've got five German. Very interesting battle here for Moscow. Very interesting, here we go. All right, they only got two hits. I think the bomber may have to go now. Sorry, Mr. Bomber. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so now we got a one. Oh, and he gets a hit on the way out the door. Yeesh, that bomber did all right. And the two artillery, oh, nothing there. And then the three fighters, he needs three hits here. Uh-oh, just got the one. Nothing like making it interesting, eh? All right, so the advantage is still with the Russians now. So we'll see, the Germans need three hits. Well, they got two. So we go one, two. And we can roll all of the Russian dice at the same time here. One, two, three. And look at that. And that is it, folks. The Russians hold Moscow. Now, having said that, the Germans are going to be able to uh, place some tanks in... Uh, Stalingrad and they're definitely gonna be moving these guys up so we'll let you know what happens for the rest of this turn we'll see if Berlin itself is going to be under duress um, and we'll see what happens here on the rest of this turn stay with us for the exciting possible conclusion to this very wacky game of Axis Knowledge Europe ah, a little classic Canadian rock to finish the game off with this is the best that the Allies could muster, and so uh, Germans are going to let it ride on this one here. Um, they're going to take Moscow. They've got a ton of stuff here at home. The Allies did succeed in uh, the Normandy landings, but uh, this could probably get taken out not too long. And the Germans built three U-boats last round just because it forced them to build destroyers now. And the Americans, just for kicks, decided to build a battleship and a destroyer because nothing they can do can really stop what's going to happen here. We've got six, seven infantry, four artillery, so you got eight twos, three ones, and then you got a three, you got a three, you got a three, you got a three, and then you got a stack of seven threes coming in here. So... They're pretty hooped, but we'll roll it out because you never know. Maybe we'll roll a whole bunch of blanks like we did last time. <clears throat> so we have 11 threes coming in. This is the same as the last German attack with 11 tanks. So we'll just start with that. Yeah, not quite as strong as you'd like out of 11, but still four hits. And there's only five units there. And then we've got uh, eight twos. I just need a, yeah, that's it. So that's it for the Ruskies. And we'll just, we'll roll it out for them though. So they got three fighters and uh, two infantry. And they, they didn't go down without a fight. Three hits. And we'll even take away armor just so it's not quite, oh, we'll take everything out. So it's not as crowded and that's it for them. So the Germans have taken Moscow uh, with authority. 
probably sent more than they really needed to, but all the Russian units are off the table now, and their meager $7 that they got is all going to go to Germany, and uh, yeah, the German build is just going to go on here, <clears throat> and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. They'll probably pile a bunch of stuff into here, and the other attack that I was definitely going to do is going to be these four going after these two to clear out the Americans down there, um, just for kicks, but... No really need to do that. The British did take Finland. Um, and, you know, for posterity, I guess we should probably put a token on there. But that's, uh, that's how that game ends, folks. Uh, the Germans actually had a really good opening couple of rounds. And their U-boats, uh, taking that tactic, really worked out for them. Uh, the nice thing about U-boats is they're 50% cheaper than the... Uh, destroyers that are needed to take them out so if the u-boats can kill enough destroyers and force the brits and the americans into buying destroyers uh that's stuff you don't have to fight on land and then you can uh marshal more of your stuff straight into moscow and not worry about landings on the, on the west coast here but hey thanks for watching folks and something i want to run past you here i noticed that uh, there's been a few people hosting uh axis and allies tournaments I was really wanting to actually host one this fall, but uh, it's just been incredibly uh, hectic around work. And uh, also I'm heading out to a wedding in Calgary. Uh, my nephew is getting married and uh, I've been asked to MC that. So I got to do some prep for that. And I also do a ton of extracurricular stuff at my school. So it looks like the time this fall is pretty shot. And, uh, of course, when Christmas comes along, well, nobody wants to do an Axis Knowledge Tournament at Christmas. Or do they? Well, I probably wouldn't. Um, that's, that's more uh, family time. Uh, and so, I'm just wondering if you want to say in the comments below, uh, if there is a time in the spring that would suit you uh, to do um, an open Axis and Allies Tournament here in the uh, lower mainland of British Columbia. And uh, we have a, an airport right in Abbotsford, so you don't have to fly to Vancouver. Um, it's a nice little airport, just one terminal. And uh, it's an international airport, so you can fly in from the, the States if you want. And if you're watching from Mexico, I believe they come from there as well. But um, yeah, just throwing it out there. And if we can get enough interest uh, built up, I can certainly find places to, uh, to set aside. Might even be able to play at the school I work at. And, uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how that works. And, uh, yeah, just go ahead and leave in the comments below what your thoughts are on that. And hopefully by uh, the spring of 2020, we can all get together and uh, roll some dice and maybe have some craziness like we just had here. And uh, have a good time. So thanks again for watching, folks. And as always, remember to hug your loved ones. Tell your friends that they're... Uh, you know, you're just so happy that they're around and that uh, you get to spend some time with them. And uh, Canadian Thanksgiving is this weekend. And I know the American Thanksgiving is going to be coming up in a, a month and a, and a week. And uh, hey, let's, uh, let's just be thankful, folks. There's so much to be thankful for. We all got tr troubles. We all got struggles. Um, but you know what? I think we're blessed beyond measure. And uh, I think we've got to focus on that. Just keep ourselves uh, in a positive frame of mind. And be so thankful that uh, we get to push little pieces of plastic around that represent what uh, millions of people went through so that we could have uh, the freedom to, to play games about war instead of having to actually march off to war. I, I'm constantly humbled by that. I've had a lot of relatives uh, in uh, World War I and World War II, and uh, some of them gave their lives. And uh, it's a sobering thought, but it always makes me thankful uh, that I can play these games without having to actually, you know, uh, grab a gun and head into danger. So, uh, if you're watching this and you are uh, service personnel for any of our armed forces, uh, for anybody, uh, my hat is definitely off to you. And uh, I wish you all the best and all the safety. So, again folks, take care, hug your, love, hug your loved ones. And as we always say here at the Pillbox, may the dice... Be with you.